Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I know that right now a lot of you guys are either studying for the MCAT or writing your personal statements or both. So I thought this would actually be a great time to just share what I wrote when I was applying to medical school for my personal statements. Hopefully this gives you guys some ideas about how to structure your personal statements or what you might want to touch on in the essay prompts. They're going to be a little bit different, but there may be some similar themes. Basically, in this video, I'm going to read my personal statement uh, I'm gonna edit it so you know I'll suggest some changes that I would make if I were resubmitting this year uh, and then finally I'm gonna dissect it so I'm gonna look at the structure and the strategies that I use when I was writing my personal statements to hopefully give you guys some ideas about what you might want to do for yours the CN Tower lit up in rainbow colors that is a symbol of the LGBT community I mentioned to several international students from Saudi Arabia. We have traveled before was their simple but humbling response. Assumptions filter information when attempting to communicate with those from unfamiliar backgrounds, but true listening has no filter. Though my intentions may have been pure to inform, they were rightly perceived as ignorance. Realizing this, I changed pace. Oh, you must miss your bidets a lot, I joked. The atmosphere switched from tension to lighthearted instantly. Yeah, but we just use water bottles, it gets the job done. Ironically, I created tension with an assumption and I relieved it with one too. The former came from a feeling of cultural superiority, eliciting a response to draw level, the latter from a desire for connection. Equally as important as the logic of a message is the emotion behind it. Emotions are essential for communication as they transcend cultures, providing an in-depth look into the experiences being described. From here, assumptions are made based on feelings. Only when these assumptions go unchecked by the listener do they become a filter. If we seek to generalize or categorize a group of people, resistance is inevitable. When the questions we ask come from a place of interest in genuine connection, others will reciprocate. If we are willing to look at foreign perspectives, listening allows us to broaden our worldview. By doing so, solutions arise that are otherwise impossible. Alright, so now I'm going to get into the part where I actually dive into the essay that I wrote and I make any changes that I would make if I were resubmitting this application today. If you guys are interested in having me or one of my consultants that's either a current medical student or resident help review your personal statements for medical school, we'd be more than happy to help. Just head on over to canadianpremed.ca and you can find more information about our services on the website. So obviously the essays that I wrote are going to require minimal, if any, revisions at all. And that's obviously because, um, you know, we had already put in extensive, extensive edits and rounds of revision into this piece of writing before I actually submitted. Uh, but that being said, there are still some changes I would make based on, you know, my rereading of the essay today. So let's get on into it. So first paragraph, uh, the CN Tower lit up in rainbow clear, da 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 da, da. Uh, That is a symbol of the LGBT community. So I think at the time that was the dominant nomenclature to refer to the community. Uh, and so that's probably what I said to this group of international students. Uh, for the purposes of inclusivity and you know rewriting this essay if I were to make it today, I might consider uh, changing that to you know the full acronym LGBTQ2SIA+. Um, just to you know show that I'm a bit more inclusive and but but th that's it's, it's kind of a toss-up because I think that's probably what I actually said to that group of students again because that was the dominant nomenclature at the time um, but I would at least consider expanding that acronym uh, just to include the various other groups that belong to the community Second paragraph, I wouldn't really change too much. You know, we'll get into sort of the different techniques I'm using in, in this essay in a, a later part of the video. Um, third paragraph, I do have some edits. Uh, so originally I said, um, 
equally as important as the logic of the message is the emotion behind it. Emotions are essential for communication as they transcend cultures, providing an in-depth look into the experiences being described. So I would change this sentence to emotions are essential for communication as they transcend cultures, adding to our understanding of the experiences being described. Uh, and the reason I would change it to that is because really learning and lifelong learning is a crucial part of being a physician you know we're always learning new things 50% of the knowledge that we graduate uh, from medical school with uh, is said to be outdated in the next 10 years or or found to be incorrect based on new science uh, and so I never want to say that I have a complete understanding or imply that I know everything um, so instead of saying an in-depth look which I think is you know less specific um, more, you know, it, it, it's, it's just not as good language, I would say adding to our understanding because that implies that I'm aware of the process of ongoing learning and the fact that I may have to correct my understanding at a future, future date based on new information that is provided to me. The other change that I uh, would make is, you know, originally I said from here, assumptions are made based on feelings. Uh, only when these assumptions go unchecked by the listener do they become a filter. Uh, so I would just change that to with these emotions and our limited worldview, assumptions are made. Um, and the reason that I would change it to that is because you know, really, I think that's a more accurate reflection of what happens. You know, we're communicating with somebody that is from a different culture and, you know, you're getting a vibe or you're, you're feeling the emotions that are present in the interaction uh, and you're interpreting what's being said and those emotions through the lens of our limited worldview. Um, I think it's good to acknowledge that we have a limited worldview which is based on our experiences uh, to date uh, because at least if you have that awareness then like I'm discussing in the essay we're open to being uh, corrected or checking our assumptions uh, by truly truly listening to the person that you're interacting with uh, and so that's why I would change that the other point which is kind of minor is just to use consistent language so I, I talk about emotions emotions um, you know in this uh, paragraph so I, I don't want to change it to feelings let me just use emotions again and make it very clear uh, to the reader what I'm trying to communicate so that's essentially it for the edits I know again not a whole lot of edits that I would make and that's once again because uh, this essay had already gone under extensive extensive revision uh, prior to me submitting it uh, but again hopefully you guys found that helpful to understand my thought process and why I would make the changes that I would make today now that we've had our essay all polished up and ready to go uh, I want to again dissect uh, the different strategies and techniques and principles that I used when writing this essay to hopefully give you guys some ideas about what you might want to do in terms of structuring your brief personal essays or your personal statements to medical school. So especially with the limited word count, I like to skip the introduction. It's okay when you're drafting, I think, and you're just getting your ideas out to actually have a bit of an introduction because that'll you know, get the creative juices flowing. Um, but in your final draft, you may wanna consider just like cutting it out and getting to the meat and potatoes. So I just start by saying the sea and tower lit up in rainbow colors and automatically, you know, I'm trying to go for that narrative effect like, oh my goodness, like, where is this person going with this? It's going to be interesting, whereas somebody else might, you know, have a generic introduction like the importance of listening in cross-cultural communication is such and such and such. Um, I'm not sort of giving away all my cards all at once and I'm, I'm hooking that reader in to want to read more. Uh, so that's one thing I like to do. Uh, if you have the space for it, I think a one sentence introduction that sort of summarizes or hooks the reader and, and tells them what you're about to talk about uh, can be effective, but I wouldn't get into a whole paragraph of introductions. You just really, you really just don't have the word count in, in most of these essays. So that's how I like to start, start in the middle. Um, the other thing I do and you know what these highlights are about is I'm alternating between narrative 
uh, and take home message. So the blue obviously is the narrative, the, the stuff about the CN Tower and the international students. Uh, and then the yellow is what I learned from the experience. Uh, but notice that I don't kind of keep that same blue and yellow, blue and yellow structure all throughout because even though it's interesting in the beginning when you're switching the structure between narrative and, and take home message, narrative and what I learned, um, if I were to keep doing that, that structure in and of itself would become repetitive and boring. Uh, and so obviously, especially in an essay like this where it's actually more important to talk about, uh, at least I think, you know, what you learned from the experiences you've had, um, I, I changed that structure for the last two paragraphs to just talk about my take-home messages uh, because, again, I want to keep uh, the reader interested and engaged and, and, and vary the structure of my writing uh, to do so. The other thing that I like to do uh, when writing these personal essays is actually talk about times that you've made mistakes. Notice that this whole essay is actually uh, about a mistake I made and it's okay to make mistakes, you know, <laughs> we're, we're human and I think this pre-med culture of, you know, 4.0 GPA and 532 MCAT and, you know, all these perfectionist qualities, um, they, they're, they're good in a sense that they drive us. but really the learning comes from making mistakes and reflecting on those mistakes and admissions committees realize that so it's okay to own up to your previous shortcomings as long as you're able to articulate uh, what you learned from those experiences and what you do differently in the next one which I hope I was able to communicate uh, through this piece of writing. So again, this is one of the seven personal statements I wrote when I was applying to medical school. So if you found this helpful, smash the like button, leave a comment below, let me know if you want me to do one of the other personal statements that I wrote. I'd be more than happy to do so as long as you guys are finding this content to be helpful. Uh, and again, for those of you applying to medical school this year, and if you're interested in getting help with your personal statements, uh, once again, head on over to canadianpremed.ca and you know we'd love to get the ball rolling and have a chat with you. That's all for now guys. Happy writing and best of luck to everyone applying this year.